Hey everybody, welcome for the October 2023 update. Uh, I did see a little bit about what is in this update uh, just because of the gaming news cycle, I couldn't avoid it. And there's apparently a card game in Aiden Chronicle. I can't remember if we knew that already or not, uh, but that's cool. Card games are one of the more common ones that I play in RPGs, the one for the Legend of Heroes. I played a whole bunch of that just recently. So, and I'm pretty sure there's screenshots of it. So anyway, let's get to it. Hey there, heroes. We have marched past Halloween and are one step closer to finalizing the game. Ooh, that sounds sweet. Speaking of which, there's no better time than the holiday season to play games. Preach that, my, my friend. What holiday games are you looking forward to? Oh, God. Probably Spider-Man, for sure. Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, maybe a couple other ones in there, too. Uh, campaign updates, digital platform selection emails. Now that we've covered most of the physical console selection, we would like to move on to the digital console version selection emails, which started to go out on November 6th. The deadline for digital platform selection is November 24th. Differences between digital deluxe and backer digital versions. Yes, uh, I think there probably is some confusion about this, but I think I know what it is, but let's see it. We have put together this chart to explain the differences between the digital deluxe version and the digital version that backers are getting. The goal is to make sure backers have received a great value for their initial support, while also making sure there are attractive options for new customers to support the title. We want to make sure there is more Aiden Chronicle in the future through supporting the passion of backers as well as new fans alike. Okay, let's see this. Um, backer reward, digital deluxe, 48 hour early access. Backer reward is 72 hour early access. Oh, okay, I did not know that. That's good to know. Ah, uh, yeah, unless I'm reading this incorrectly, we get 72 hour early access as backers. Again, something I've completely forgotten about, if that is the case. Okay, I skipped some of the, the more tedious stuff there. Development updates, Mariyama's monthly development report. Different authors approach world setting and the story differently. While some create a detailed world setting and then fill it with story, I consider the setting to be a tool that assists the story. For me, the world setting exists to make the story run smoothly and to add depth. So I try not to create so many settings that I have an un unnecessary surplus I won't need in the future. But sometimes that simply doesn't fly. More than 100 heroes had to be assigned a place of origin. Of course, the world would be too small if only places that existed within the game could be used. So we had to make up places that did not exist in the game to be assigned as some characters' birthplaces. Yes, just like the Suicoden series, we had characters coming, like, from the very first game, we had characters coming from outside of it. And that gives us something to speculate about in the future about where we're going to go. And it gives more flavor to the places we could go in the future if we know characters have come from those places. So basically, we need to set up locations that are not used in, in, in the game. I'd like to keep those vague, if possible, so that they don't become a liability later on. Yes, you maybe mention them. Don't go into too much depth. We'll see what he does. But as a player, it's definitely more fun getting a glimpse of some details about that part than for us to be overly vague about it. Yes, that is that is accurate. Be vague, but not crazy vague. You you still want to give us a little bit a little bit of juice in terms of things to kind of salivate over for the future. In the midst of such a combination, some of the names are specific and don't exist in the game. And characters who don't seem to care about such things are just given vague names like from a country west of XX. Kumuna D's sneak peek. Oh, here's the card game. Komunichiwa Komubanwa, director Komuna here. I'm back here with another sneak peek for you. We can also play a variety of mini games as you progress through the story of Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes. And I'm going to give you a quick look at just one of them card game. It's a very simple game where players play cards from their hands on the table and compete for three positions, but it's actually pretty deep. Okay, Marcus is playing cards here. Oh, and we got our characters as cards too. And so we got different colors and numbers being assigned to them. Let's see what else he has to say here. Yeah, we see like Hilby and Noah and Eupharius. The higher the total numbers in the upper left corner of the card equals the higher the strength and the better the position you get. Like other card games, matching card colors, numbers, or creating combinations with numbers in sequential order gets you bonus points. Not only that, cards with the same patterns as their friends have skills that activate various effects when certain conditions are met. Hildy's card is a powerful one that increases your strength by plus three just by playing it. Some skills are more effective than others, such as those that increase strength if the card colors are different, 
or other such straight up takeaway points from your opponent. It's not a simple matter of building decks and play styles that differ depending on the characters your opponent uses. Buy card packs in the game to acquire cards and build your own unique and powerful deck to become the best card battler. That's all for today. Yes, and just like any good mini game, I really hope they give some decent rewards to it. I always love it in RPGs where like doing all the catching all the different fish or playing against all the opponents in the card game nets a really sweet reward of some kind usually an accessory or a weapon or something along those lines so hopefully they do that in this game too i think that'd be really really sweet it just it just for me as a person it just gives me so much more incentive to do the mini game if there's something worth getting out of it instead of just doing it for the sake of doing it necessarily I think fishing game is maybe one of the worst examples of that when I speak about it because I just like fishing for whatever reason. Um, but for the card game, for example, I could maybe skip it if it doesn't have really good rewards. But it's Auden, so I'll probably do everything anyway. But just as a general rule, that's kind of what I'm like. You no, know, so cool. Another new mini game. Obviously, a huge feature for us RPG fans. Mariama's monthly development report. Cool to know how he kind of approaches his world building and teasing other areas of the world. It makes sense. You want to you wanna give players a little bit of something, but you don't want to get bogged down in too many details because then you kind of like hamstring yourself in terms of what you can do and what you need to keep included in a future game. Like still for Sweet Code in 5 with Killy and how the tribe he came from, from the Queendom of Helena. And how they worship like a big red bird. And they talked about that quite a bit in Sweet Code in 2. Yes, I know Mariama was gone by the time Sweet Code in 5 came. But I'll always remember wanting to see Killy's tribe. I think that's how you say it. See his tribe in the Queen of Philanna. And we never saw them. Yes, we saw him. And he had a place in the main narrative, which was super cool. But I just always wish that we could see more about him specifically and his people or his tribe. And I felt like that was such a missed opportunity. And as a huge fan, that was something I really noticed. So I, I like where Mariama, Mariama's head's at with that. And yes, I know he was involved with two and Killy's backstory and the Queen of Flaina and everything that happened there because they teased a little bit of Flaina quite a bit when you did the characters' investigations in Sweet Code in Two. Um, and maybe he would have been sure to include that if he'd stayed with the series. But yeah, just one of those things, right? that uh that they gave me details about and i'm just like oh man i wish i wish that was addressed but anyway no update cool little bit of backer information again kind of letting us know where we're at the 72 early access for backers is freaking sick holy shit that's amazing so april 21st versus april 24th for us backers that's cool um yeah so that's it for the update hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for joining me as always looks like they maybe have stopped the character updates the profiles but i think i'm okay with that gives us something to be surprised about going into the game if there's more i won't complain but if there's no more that's cool too anyway thanks for joining me guys see you later